They do not announce the numbers of the athletes committing the fouls and Collegiate Reeves, number 43, joining the other four. Flick, good protection. Scancy, no good, he trapped the ball. Tremendous effort, but trapped the ball. Now a big third and ten for Flick. Intercepted, broken up by Paul Gergis, the sophomore from Lakewood, Ohio. So, Michigan's defense gets a standing ovation. Oh, Mark Giroux showed good brain power there, quick you, thinking. You got to be selective. <laughs> Carter in motion. He's got running room. which has been most impressive, especially in this second half. The second thing, uh, well, we'll hold for a second because there's the third thing right there. Number one, Anthony Carter. I said he was the most exciting player on the field, and he's proved to you why in this second half. Washington did a good job of containing him in the first half. They haven't been able to accomplish that here in the second half. Here. Big play on third and three, and Wangler to Carter. Carter has certainly emerged here in the second half. He goes up to catch the ball, takes a real shot right there from Ray Horton, and he's not going to give it back to anybody. And a fine pass from John Wangler. Wangler doing a superb job of throwing here in the second half. Carter! They can't catch him. He's got a... Well, it's going to be close. He's going to be very close. Ken Gardner, 29. Edwards carrying Washington tacklers with him to the three-yard line. Fletcher Jenkins and Lake. Again, Carter in motion. Wangler going to run it. Didn't make it, but close. He stopped at the one-yard line by Cadditch. Helped out by Steve Pope, 49, playing for the injured Jerry McLean. a very close surge there. Tremendous defensive play by Washington. And I guess he was just suspended there over the goal line. 38, Mark Stewart. Mark's had an outstanding day for the defense. First down at the Michigan 17. Flick looking into the end zone. Lost the ball. Robert Thompson took it right out of his pocket. The ball, though, is whistled in. It'll come back to the 31-yard line at the point where the fumble occurred. You cannot run with a fumble in college football. The way to... Bo Schembechler finally takes a victory ride in Pasadena.
attitude changed. It was a different man that came to Pasadena, that he was going to come here differently, and he was going to go home with a different feeling. Coach, Coach Schembecker, finally it happened for you. Right, right. and I'm, I've never been more pleased, Merlin. Uh, we've had um, a lot of great success in the Michigan football program, but we've never won this game since I've been there, and it's one of the greatest thrills of my life. If it had happened again, if you had lost again, do you think you would have relieved the talk about a jinx? Uh, uh, no, the jinx, there's no jinx here. We've always played hard. We've just come up a little bit short. This time we didn't. You had Thanks to some of these guys. <laughs> you had a little magic from number one there. Tell me how important he was to you today. Anthony Carter um, has more effect on the game than any single player I've ever coached. And um, he may not look like it, and sometimes um, he's standing out there and nothing happens. But sooner or later, he gets it. Anthony, you were used as a decoy in much of the first half. Uh, in fact, you were shut out on the passing side of it. Did that bother you at all? Well, no, it didn't, because we, we, we figured it was going to happen, you know. So we went in, you know, in halftime and then said uh, everything was going to come my way pretty soon. So we just, you know, took it as it came. You certainly more than made up for it in the second half. We were kind of surprised, not really surprised, but uh, we watched you do some running from that position coming across. Did you enjoy being a ball carrier today? Well, yeah, I did. You know, like Coach Bo said, you know, I, I could do a lot of things, you know. All I got to do is just get the ball. We kept looking for you to throw a pass from that position. Was that something you might have done if this game had been a little closer? Well, yeah, I, I suppose to throw the pass, but Stanley Elway, he couldn't get out in the flats in time. So Coach Bo told me, you know, if I couldn't get the pass, just run it. Actually, two of those were passes. Yeah. Two of them were passes, yeah. and he read. Congratulations to you. A wonderful victory, and I'm sure you'll carry it proudly back to Michigan with you. Thank you, Merlin. Thank you very much. Let's go it all began in 1902. Michigan beat Stanford that year. The first broadcast on NBC Radio was in 1927. You saw the first coast-to-coast -coast telecast of a football game on NBC in 1952 and the first color telecast in 62. The glorious tradition continues in the 67th game, the 92nd festival of the Tournament of Roses. The University of Michigan defeats a fine University of Washington team 23-6. For Merlin Olson, this is Dick Enberg again. Happy New Year, everybody. 